And now we come to the next section, 5.2, tree diagram. In fact, tree diagram is one of the pos one of the ways to list all the possible outcomes of an event. So let's take the example of visiting a cafe. And suppose in the soup item, we have the red soup and the cream soup, so-called white soup. And therefore, in the soup item, we have two choices. And in tree diagram, we always start from a single point and then we draw two branches of the tree in this way. And now we have red soup and the white soup here. Ah, now we come to the, our main course, which is very delicious. We have chicken, fish, and beef. And therefore, we have three choices. And now if we select the red soup, and therefore, when we come to the main course, we have three choices. They will redraw three different branches here. And now, even if we select white soup uh, in the soup item, again, we have three different choices in the main course. Again, we have chicken, fish, or beef. And now, we can summarize uh, how many different choices or different possible outcomes can we find in this situation? And uh, it is very obvious that we have two choices in the soup and three choices in the main course. Then there will be a total of six possible outcomes. Uh, a total of six possible outcomes. So we can write it down. This is our outcomes. And if we write some symbol to represent each photo, we have red soup, white soup, and we have a chicken, fish, and then B, C, F, B. We can write down all the six possible outcomes using this symbol. We have R, C, R, F, R, B, W, C, W, F, W, B. And actually, we can always find the total number of possible outcomes by multiplying the number of choices in each item. In the soup item, we have two choices. In the main course item, we have three choices. And we call this the law of multiplication. And this is very important, the law of multiplication. The total number of outcomes will always be the product of the number of choices in each item. And after watching this video, this menu, uh, you may feel a bit hungry. Huh? And in example 5, a magician invites at random free audience to participate in the show. And uh, if the sex uh, of each participant is either a male or female, and uh, the chance of being selected by the uh, magician is equal, find the probability of the following events. And uh, before we can do this, we have to draw a tree diagram to list all the possible outcomes. And again, in the tree diagram, we start from a single point. And uh, we have a total of three audience. We have audience one, audience two, and audience three. And since in each audience, we have either male or female. And if the first one is a male, then in the second audience, again, it can be either male or female. And we can repeat this if the first audience is a female. And when we come to the third audience, again, we have two choices. So finally, the total number of possible outcomes will be 2 times 2 times 2. We have 8 possible outcomes. Again, we call this the law of multiplication. And the outcomes can be written down in this way. We have MMM, MMF, MFM. M F F 
f m m f m f and f f m and finally f f f and uh, with this three diagram we can answer all these parts rather easily for example part a three females are invited therefore the probability will be we have a total of eight possible outcomes and only one outcome is favorable so we have one over eight and remember to write a label for this three f for example and for part b two f one m and we can mark whether any outcomes we have two f m one m we have this one two f one m two f one m two f one m therefore our answer will be three over eight and for part c at least one female at least one f so again we have to mark all the outcomes with at least one f we have this one one f two f one f so therefore we have a total of seven favorable outcomes and now we come to example six sophie has two bought two vcds we can denote them by using v1 v2 and then two dvd we can denote them using d1 and d2 and then suppose you choose two of them randomly and lends to william find the probability of each of the following events and before we can complete part a and part b we can draw a tree diagram to show all the possible outcomes again we start from a single point and uh, since we have a total of four this so and uh, we have this one We have four choices v1 v2 d1 and d2 and again we start from a single point to draw the tree diagram and when we come to this two and if the first this is v1 then what left behind will be only v2 d1 and d2 only so actually when we come to these two we only have three choices therefore we have v2 d1 and d2 and we can complete these three branches here and we can repeat this for the remaining three choices of this one and if we have d v2 as this one then we have v1 d1 D2 free choices in these two. And if we have D1 here, then we can have V1, V2, and D2 in these two. And finally, if we have D2 in this one, then we have V1, V2, and D1 in the this number two. And so finally, we have a total of how many possible outcomes here we have four times three equals to 12 possible outcomes this is our law of multiplication again we write down all the possible outcomes one by one v1 v2 v1 d1 v1 d2 v2 v1 v2 d1 v2 d2 D1, V1, D1, V2, D1, D2, and then finally, D2, V1, D2, V2, and D2, D1. And therefore, the answer for part A will be William has borrowed two DVDs. Two this, uh, two DVDs. We have a total of 12 possible outcomes. And we can see that two DVDs, we have one two oh, we have only two the two favorable outcomes 
Therefore, this will be 1 over 6. And uh, for part B, William borrow 1 VCD and 1 DVD. Therefore, we can mark all the favorable outcomes which have 1 VCD and 1 DVD. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then there were puppy. 1V, 1D. 8 over 12. Therefore, this will be 2 over 3.